Hey everyone, this is Sam Gold, and in this breakdown I took a look at Tyler Lockett's route running and his overall ability to create separation in the Seahawks offense. When Tyler Lockett was drafted in the third round out of Kansas State, many saw him as simply a special teamer handling kick and punt return duties. This was partly true as he was given Associated Press First Team All-Pro honors because of this ability. Versus the Bears, Lockett had his first kick return touchdown of his career. Looking at the end zone view gives you a better idea how Lockett was able to break free and was actually due to wide receiver number 83 Ricardo Lockett. He sprints from the opposite side of the field and blocks the man perfectly to blast a hole open. All Tyler Lockett has to do is beat the kicker Robbie Gold and he's free for a long touchdown. As a side note, if you haven't read Ricardo Lockett's Player Tribune article discussing his neck injury and his recovery process later in the season, definitely check it out. Beyond Tyler Lockett's kick return duties though, the Seahawks were surprised by how well he ran routes and how quickly he learned the offense. By the second week of the season, he earned starting reps at wide receiver as well. As a receiver that ran a 4-4 40-yard dash at his combine, I would have initially guessed that he relied on his speed to get open. In fact, it was Tyler Lockett's ability to change his speed in and out of his breaks that helped him create separation in his routes. In the NFL, there are many fast receivers, but to have control is another thing. In his second target versus the Packers, Lockett ran an in-route underneath the Packers' cover one robber defense. Lockett runs at 80% speed, and then accelerates smoothly out of his cut to get open in the middle of the field. Wilson throws the ball slightly behind, which sets up Lockett for a big hit by the defender, but he still hangs on, gaining the first down. Versus the Bengals in Week 5, Lockett runs another deep in route crossing the middle of the field. Right before he cuts, he fakes hard to the outside, and then cuts inside. The defender bites hard, and turns in the opposite direction. A simple, but well-executed cut that Lockett displayed all season. In the fourth quarter, Lockett showed his stop and start quickness on this fade route down the sideline to get by Bengals cornerback number 27, Drake Kirkpatrick. Lockett can't keep his feet in bounds, but this was definitely foreshadowing things to come for the Kansas State product. On the season, Russell Wilson threw the ball 27 times deeper than 15 yards down the field to Lockett. 20 of those passes came after the bye week in week nine. Against the Ravens, Lockett is split wide right and runs a fade route up the sideline. The Ravens are playing cover three zone dog with three deep defenders while free safety number 23 Kendrick Lewis is blitzing. The offensive line does a fantastic job of keeping the pocket clean for Wilson who places the ball in stride to Lockett. Lockett gets a full step past number 21 Ladarius Webb by the 25 yard line for a long score. In week 15, Lockett motions across the formation versus the Browns. No defender follows Lockett signaling zone defense. Showing two deep safeties and the outside cornerbacks playing off the line of scrimmage, the Browns drop into a cover four shell post-snap. Lockett runs a wheel route to the deep left corner of the end zone, while Jermaine Curse runs a dig route crossing the middle of the field. This wheel-dig combination is designed to attack the deep left zone defender of this defense. The dig baits him and he's late getting back to Lockett, which opens up a window for Wilson. The ball is placed inside of the receiver, where ideally I want to see it closer to the sideline. Lockett and Ibrahim Campbell catch the football at the same time, and Lockett holds onto it for the 27-yard score. 12 of the 27 deep passing attempts connected, but I counted at least 6 missed opportunities for deep strikes down the field. Here's an example versus the Browns on a deep post route, while well, here's an example versus the Panthers on a go route. The ball is underthrown in the first pass, while the ball is overthrown in the second pass. Hopefully with a full offseason, these two will have more time to work on their chemistry together. Outside of deep passing attempts, the Seahawks loved using Lockin on hitch routes and wide receiver screens. 29 of his targets were on these two passes, where 14 of them came on first down. These 14 passes on first down earned the team an average of 9 yards per attempt. Versus the 49ers, Lockett runs a hitch up to the sideline. He works his way up and then back on the comeback to create space. In this West Coast offense, his placement by the sideline stretches the defense horizontally. The same goes for bubble screens, where Lockett uses elusiveness after the catch to gain yards. These plays, as I said before, stretch the defense out horizontally, therefore opening up running lanes in the middle of the field. In his 78 targets, I saw three drops. Two were in the regular season, while one was in the postseason against the Panthers, while Tyler Lockett ran a wheel route up the sideline. Versus the Ravens in Week 14, Lockett drops a deep fade route and gets called for offensive pass interference. Wilson did not lose confidence in receiver, and on his next target, placed a beautiful pass on the sideline on another fade route between two defenders. This is an incredible throw and a great catch.
One of the big concerns Scouts had with Lockett when he was entering the NFL was his size. His inability to play press took away any potential of him playing on the line of scrimmage. The Seahawks kept him in the slot for the majority of the season, so he rarely faced it. Against the Lions, the defender attempts to press him from off the line of scrimmage, but Lockett uses the space in an inside release to widen the cornerback away from the intended path outside. This is one of the few times I actually saw a defender attempt to press Lockett at the line of scrimmage this season. Overall, there's a lot to like about Lockett. He has excellent top end speed with the ability to control speed through cuts. He is very elusive and he has very reliable hands even though he suffers from an occasional mental lapse drop. Well that's it for me. In my previous video breakdown on Doug Baldwin, I looked at his role as a slot receiver in Daryl Bevel's West Coast offense. Make sure you check that video out as well since this video complements it. Subscribe to my channel for my next video breakdown and you can find me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold. If you want to support my work with donation, follow the link to my Patreon account.